anything. Okay. All right. Um, welcome to our virtual park and recreation meeting of August 2nd. Um, I feel like we have a really big agenda, so we're going to get right to it. Um, I'll do a roll call. It looks like we have a number of people on the call that are um, here to report on items on the agenda, right, Catherine? Uh, do we have any members of the public? Yes, yeah, so it looks like we've got two members of the public. Okay, um, so I will go ahead and call for a roll call. And go ahead, Becky, take it away. All right, Commissioner Cabrales. Here. Uh, Chair Emerson. Here. Commissioner Gutierrez. Here. Commissioner Machado. Here. And Commissioner Sandoval. I don't believe I see him yet. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just wondering, since we do have members of the public here, I like to be welcoming. I might be going off script, but maybe we could take a moment to introduce ourselves and have them introduce themselves, if that's okay with the people on the call. Um, typically, we don't introduce the people, uh, the members of the public, but since we have so many, and we don't really have a, a way to do that, um, mm -hmm. but Got since it. we have so many new folks on the call, I mean, we can definitely introduce so we know who all the faces, who the commissioners are versus who staff and our consultants are. Okay, that sounds good. I'm Cicely Emerson, chair of the commission and um, also work for the county and a uh, resident here in Santa Rafael. Maybe let's have the, the commissioners go first and then staff can go. Hi, I'm Commissioner Cabrales. I've been living here in San Rafael since 1997, and I've had my kids raised here. Uh, my new kitten, Tessa, is joining us today. So she's a very <laughs> curious kitten, so she'll be around, I think. Hey, everybody. I'm Mark Machado. I am a commissioner, and I've lived in San Rafael since 1984. Raised a couple of kids here. And happy to be with you tonight. I'm Commissioner Terrez. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Santa Fe. Uh, also have kids uh, growing up here and happy to have everybody here. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I'm uh, Catherine Kufa. I'm the Library and Recreation Director for the City of San Rafael. And I am also happen to be a lifelong resident of San Rafael. Hi everyone, Craig Verame. I'm the Assistant Library and Recreation Director, not a lifelong resident of San Rafael. I am a California transplant originally from Michigan, and I've been with the city of San Rafael for just two short months. So I'm uh, looking forward to learning more, and thanks for being here. I'm Steve Mason. I'm Senior Recreation Supervisor. Uh, Stephen, do you want, oh, go April. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, April Miller, uh, Public Works Director. I, I've been at the city for about two and a half years. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm the Program Coordinator at the Albert J. Borough Community Center. Hi, everyone. My name is JC Aguilar. I'm an Assistant Engineer with the Department of Public Works. Uh, Commissioner Sandoval, we're doing just a quick round of introductions since there's a lot of new folks on. If you want to just quickly introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Commissioner Sandoval. Good to meet you. Uh, Samugi and Melanie, do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. Hi, I'm Tsumegi Fujimura from Gates and Associates. I'm a landscape uh, consultant for City. I'm Melanie Reynolds with Gates and Associates, and uh, I work with Smoogi, and we're a landscape consultant with the city. They're here to present on the Sun Valley Playground project. And then Becky, our last person. Hi, everyone. I'm Becky Orden. Um, I've been a resident of San Rafael for going on 13 years now, I think. Um, 
raised my kids here for the most part, and they're both in high school. Been working for the city for about eight years now. Great. Thank you for that. I think it's nice just to uh, let our public know who we are. Um, and then Becky, can you explain to the public how to do their public comment? Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Viewers are welcome to provide public comment online through Zoom or by telephone. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raise hand if you wish to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to speak, press star nine. When it's your turn to speak, you will be notified by the host inviting you to participate. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. Thanks, Becky. Has uh, the commissioners, have you had time to review the agenda? Yes. Are there any amendments to this evening's agenda? Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and move to um, our first agenda item, which is to approve the minutes from the June meeting. Is there um, any questions about the minutes, any amendments to it, any anything? All right, any public comment on the minutes? Do not see any raised hands here. All right. Uh, I would request a motion from the commission in a second so that we can approve these minutes. I move to approve. I move to second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. All right. Uh, Commissioner Cabrales. <clears throat> yes. Chair Emerson. Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez. Yes. Commissioner Machado. Yep. And Commissioner Sandoval. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so our first agenda item is introductions, awards, recognitions, and presentations. So we had hoped that Stacy or Catherine would be here, but we wanted to just acknowledge their service. To the commission, Stacy served for eight years, and Catherine for a number of years. But we valued their participation, especially Stacy, who brought a lot of value to the commission. And I will miss having her on here. So if she decides to read this recording, she will hear that. But otherwise, I don't know if you want to say anything, Catherine. But you know, just thank you you know, to all of you guys who are commissioners who are participating and having someone stay for eight years really kind of helps uh, with the continuity of uh, the commission. Yeah, Stacy definitely brought a lot of um, historical knowledge that was really valuable. Um, we will be hopefully working with her to get a proclamation um, from city council so we can let you all know uh, when that will be happening. Um, so yeah, we, we apologize that we, just with um, postponing the July meeting, uh, we missed the time when we went from the seven commission commissioners to five. So we, we weren't, we didn't quite catch that their last meeting was gonna be their last, but we really recognize their service and appreciate it. Um, and just wanted to take a moment to, to thank them both for their service to the city. Thank you. Is there any other, um, any other, I don't think there's anything more. This isn't like announcements. So we'll just move on to the movies in the parks and Steven, I think you're gonna present on that. Yay. Yeah, real quick. I just wanted to, to introduce Steven and, and thank him for being here tonight. He's taking some time away from his coaching responsibilities with the junior giants this evening to be here. And is not typically the person that would be presenting on movies in the parks. We have a vacancy in one of our program coordinator roles. So he was, uh, he volunteered to step up and share a little bit about this really incredible program. And also just wanted to acknowledge that Steve Mason is here uh, at, uh, to, to fill in any gaps if needed, but Stephen, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about a program we have coming up um, to close out our summer season. It's called Movies in the Park. So I have a short presentation I want to show you guys.
Is everybody hearing the audio okay, or is it just me? I feel like it's okay. It's just me then. And can everybody see the, the slide that just showed up? Hello? Let me go ahead and open that up. I, I don't think I opened that up for you yet, Stephen. Give me just a moment. All right, you should be good to go. And everybody can see the slides, right? No, yeah. Try sharing it again. Yep, one more time. No? Yes. Okay. All right, so our Movies in the Park program. So the Movies in the Park program started in 2017 as part of the free month-long California and Park Recreation Society Parks Make Better celebration during July's Park and Recreation Month. The celebration featured weekly concerts in the park and culminated with the showing of Sandlot at Gristel Park. In 2018 and 2019, the number of movies grew to four and five movies shown at a variety of parks, including Pickleweed Park, Victor Jones Park, Albert Park, Sierra Linda Park, Falkirk, and Gristel Park. In 2020, due to COVID precautions, we were unable to host the event. Typically, 80 to 120 people um, attend each movie showing. Participants bring picnic blankets, chairs, snacks, um, and dinner as they settle into a spot on the grass and enjoy talking with their neighbors, playing in the park, and watching movies. Community groups, local businesses, and other city departments often partner with the event at specific locations, adding something special for the community. We've been joined by Pickleweed Library staff who have read stories and offered arts and crafts activities before the film begins, as well as the Canal Youth and Family Council, Silberman's Ice Cream and Kona Ice have also participated at many of our movie sites to provide treats to the audience as they enjoy the film. We choose movies that the entire family can enjoy. Some favorites have been Coco, The Lego Movie 2, Wally, -E, and Incredibles 2. The movies shown at Pickleweed Park are always shown in Spanish with English subtitles. This season, all movies will again be shown on a screen provided by Funflix Outdoor Movie Company. We, contact, we contract with Funflix to provide the screen and sound equipment, movie, movie licensing, and to set up and break down the equipment at the end of each showing. This season, we will be bringing the big screen back to Pickleweed Park um, as it has not been used since the 2018 uh, movie season due to uh, the so the stakes in the ground came up from the screen and the screen floated up off the ground. So we had to project the screen onto the side of the building as you can see here um, to, show this, to show the movie um, before we were actually about to cancel it actually. Um, but the screen showed well on, on the, it looked great on the side of the building to the delight of the attending families and not to mention the staff. In 2019 and 2021, staff plan on projecting on the side of Albert J. Burrow Community Center as sort of a trademark for the location. Um, however, for best picture quality, we have decided to bring the big screen back to pick a weed location. The movie titles are decided on by staff at various community centers. Some centers will survey local participants by sending out polls to the community or posting movie voting polls to the city's Facebook page. This year's movies to be shown at the park have been chosen by staff. August 26th at Peacock Park, Thing 2 will be shown. September 9th at Sun Valley Park, Luca will be shown. September 23rd at Pickleweed Park, Encanto will be shown. This movie will be shown in Spanish, but we'll have the English subtitles. And on October 7th at Sierra Linda Park, Hotel Transylvania will be shown. Um, we want to invite everybody to come out and support the program. Um, and let's make this year's program better than years in the past. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yes, I will be there if I can. Um, great yes. program. Should be great to be back to in real life at the movies. Definitely. Hope in the park, good. even though I think we did it last year too, right? Uh, we, I think we have a random- I didn't thing. make it last year, but I will be there in real life this year. But thank you. Sounds yeah. great. 
Any public comment or questions from the commissioners about the movies in the park? That sounds like a no to me. Well, thanks, Stephen, for your presentation. And again, I look forward to going to the movies. Great choices on the titles. Thank you for your time. Thank I, you. I support Sing Two and everything else. Yes, absolutely. It'll be really fun. Okay, so next we have, um, well, now we have public comment, but it's for items not on the agenda. So. I'll go ahead and let uh, Becky explain how to do it, but it's really if there's something outside, otherwise you can have public comment during the agenda item. All right, thank you, Chair. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the part participants button and select raise hand if you wish to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to speak, please press star nine. When it's your turn to speak, you will be notified by the host inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. And we do have a raised hand chair. Um, I'll get the timer ready here. Let's see, it looks like we have Diane Pollock. All right, Diane, go ahead and unmute yourself and you'll have three minutes. Okay, hi. Um, I am a Sun Valley resident and I am just trying to, uh, some of you might have heard that there's a number of people in Sun Valley that are trying to uh, honor a longtime resident who recently passed away named Denny Peroni. Um, I, you know, this is about getting a bench in Sun Valley Park with his name on it in honor of like this man who is one of the most beloved people in our neighborhood, he's lived across the park from an for his entire life. Um, we've been trying to figure out how to move this forward. And we really don't want it to be, you know, we would like to kind of separate this whole thing from this whole, the whole park redesign. Um, we're happy to raise money. There's, you know, we just need a path forward. His birthday is tomorrow and we've been trying for a month to get an okay from the city so that we know what to do. You know, we just really want to make this happen. Now I fundraised and organized 20 years ago. I and another person did all the fundraising at Sun Valley Park for the fence around the park and, and benches. At that time, people gave me $500 and that's how, and, and uh, that's how they got their name on the two benches that have names there. So it wasn't a ton of money and there really wasn't a lot of red tape. So I'm willing to work on it. There's other people that are, we just wanna know a path forward and an okay to do it. That's it. Thank you, Diane, for that and for your efforts for your neighbor. Um, I think that I will go ahead and call on staff to respond. I do think there's a path forward for this project but I'm not the expert, I'm just the facilitator. So Catherine, maybe can you, I mean, yeah, respond so Chair briefly? Emerson, you know, I think typically we don't comment on items not on the agenda because of Brown Act, but because this is related to Sun Valley Play Park and we have so much on the agenda related to Sun Valley, I, I think we're okay to, to respond. And we were planning on addressing this because we know we've, I haven't spoken to Diane, but I've spoken to a number of other Sun Valley residents about this. So right. I'm actually going to turn it over to, to Craig to um, kind of provide a little bit about where the city is on this. As, as we all know, anything that relates to amenities and installations in a public space, it's never just as simple. Um, as we would like it to be. So I'm going to I'm going to let Craig tell you where we are in that process and this is something that you will be able to um, weigh in on in the future. Yeah, thanks Catherine. Um I think there is a path forward here and I, that's something we're we're working on. I think the city is interested in exploring opportunities to uh, have a memorial bench program. What we're working on right now is we're assessing our policy for how we would uh, essentially administer that program and work with the public to receive those requests to, to make sure that we have a process in place. 
there are some guiding documents for us on that that the city has in place. We're reviewing those. We're hoping to bring forward a, a draft policy to this commission, hopefully in September or October for review, uh, to take a look at that policy and uh, hopefully send that then to city council for approval. Um, like Catherine said, there's, you know, we, we want to make sure we have a process. We want to make sure it's efficient and streamlined. We really just don't have that process in place right now for a memorial bench program to do that. So that is something we want to do. We're hoping to do that in the next couple of months. And that is a, uh, you know, it, it's something we have to adopt and go through the channel. So, uh, you know, very interested in it. I, uh, I have received quite a few inquiries in my first couple of months here as well. We do know there's interest in that from the public. So actively working on it. Thanks, Craig. All right, so we'll keep our fingers crossed that the policy development will be rapid so that this bench can happen in a good amount of time. Um, so back to the agenda, I think we're ready for our next, which is um, about the Sun Valley Playground project. And we have our, um, we have our designers here and we're excited to see your presentation and thank you so much for showing up and showing us your design. We're really excited to see it. Hi everyone. Oh, go ahead, Craig, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Hey everyone, my name is JC again. Um, I will be managing the program. I work for the Department of Public Works um and i will be seeing the sun valley park playground and we're very excited to bring this project to you all um, and kind of show you guys what we have so far um that being said i'm here to introduce our design consultants who you met earlier melanie and samugi and they will take it from here all right let me share my screen okay can everybody see my screen okay great so here, um, hi everyone. I'm here today to present to you the playground improvements for Sun Valley Park. This is our agenda for today. The purpose of this meeting to give is to give you an update on the project and to present preferred plan for any comments. I'll start with a quick introduction, although we've had a couple um, already, and then we'll talk about the site, efforts to date, community engagement, preferred plan, next steps, and we'll have some time for discussion. So we're again, I'm Smoogie from Gates and Associates. Melanie is here with me today to answer any of your questions. Um, a lot of you might be already familiar, but this is Sun Valley Park located in a neighborhood Northwest from the downtown area. The park is located along uh, Solano Street and our project is focused on the playground, which is highlighted in white over here. Efforts to date. We had our preliminary concept plan approved back in August of 2021, and we conducted existing site assessment using topographic surveys and site walks that was completed late 2021. And we recently had our community engagement uh, that was done both online and in person. Uh, this is the preliminary concept plan that was used for grant funding and estimating. Um, we conducted the uh, existing site assessment to come up with opportunities for accessibility improvements and usability improvements. And we also saw uh, a, lot, a, a lot of needs for more shades. So the community had two opportunities to provide input through online survey and a pop-up in the park. And we got the words out through posting posters in the park we sent postcards out to all residences within a thousand feet from the park and also through neighborhood association. So we provided the same information and questions on the online survey as well as the in-person pop-up. This is our introductory informational board, shows our concept plan with areas where we'll be um, improving the pedestrian paving, as well as we're improving the ramp that will be ADA accessible from the ADA parking stall directly to the playground. We're also introducing new drinking fountain benches, new uh, play surfacing and new play features. And we are relocating the handprint murals 
uh, from the wooden wall over here that's decaying to a more sturdier wall next to the restroom. So the first question we asked was which two to five play structure uh, do you prefer? We gave them three options and these play structures are all specifically designed for this project. So what they see is what they're going to get. And same for five to, two, uh, five to 12 play structures, uh, three different opinion, uh, options provide similar features like slides and climbers, but providing different movements. We also have some room for play accessories. So option A shows small rockers and small spinners. Option B shows a bigger spinner and option C shows some swings. We also asked the community for their color preferences. And here is what we heard. So for the online survey, we got 144 individual responses and the survey was available from June 3rd to June 26th. We had 52 responses at the pop-up in the park. Uh, the graph on the left shows the combined result. The blue shows the in-person result and the orange are the online responses. And the board on the right are scanned copy of the boards that we presented in person. We gave uh, people stickers to put on the board for uh, the features they found more, most appealing. And for two to five play, both online and in person, uh, option B was a win. Uh, for a five to 12 play structure, all of option B was also the most popular. Uh, we heard that the big shade structures that were incorporated in the play structure was most appealing. And for play structure, swings were hands down everybody's favorite. And for color, surprising or maybe not surprising, cool tones were everybody's favorite, uh, mostly in response to the heat and sun um, at the sun uh, at the park. We also collected additional comments. Um, it was also available online. Uh, but to summarize what we heard, the main concerns were shade and dog safety. And in response to what we heard, this is our preferred plan. As you can see in the back, the five to 12 play, uh, play structure is exactly what we showed on our surveys. Uh, for two to five play structure, we did incorporate two additional shade structures that are incorporated into the feature. Uh, to provide more shade in the playground. And we were able to fit two taut swings, two belt swings, and two companion uh, swings. And there's a little bonus spinner in the um, area that we saw was available. Uh, we also did move around bench locations according to what we heard. Uh, parents often want to sit inside the gated play area, so we are providing two benches inside and two benches outside, and we made sure they are located under trees to maximum, to have maximum shade. Um, and our next step is to create a construction document for bidding, and I hope to see this project get built soon. Any questions or comments? A quick question, uh, Mark Machado, uh, Commissioner. Um, the uh, that that will be enclosed by the gate that's already there. Are, are new gates going to be put up, or, or how's that going to work? It will be replaced with new gates and uh, fences. And I noticed you said dog safety, and that, is that safety from the dogs or safety for the dogs? <laughs> Probably a little of both, <laughs> depending who you talk to. Yeah, I think replacing the fence was uh, was kind of a non-negotiable yeah. element. Absolutely. Got it. Thank you. It looks like um, Ariel. Yeah. Hi. Um, I can't tell from the drawing, are those trees existing, the ones in the gated playground area? Is that the redwood and the? Yes, yes okay. they're existing. Okay. All of the trees are existing. Um, and then my other question was the, um, oh, okay. So I actually had two questions. Um, the benches inside, is that an, enough? Like I, I assume 
<laughs> I assume you do this for a living, um, are two benches inside the playground, like, enough? It feels a little light if you had, you know, six, seven families playing in there, but, um, so I guess that's more of a comment. And then my other question, I feel like in drawings that hand mural is on one side of the restroom or another. Am I seeing that? Am I in, making this up in my head? No, Which in the side original is it on? concept, we had it on the north side. And then um, after being on site and kind of, you know, checking out what's actually a more visible side, um, we think the southern side is, is a more uh, appropriate place to place this mural that okay. people like. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then am I correct in that the um, basketball area is not getting touched, generally speaking, except maybe like the stairs up to it or the stairs up to it gone now? Those are all to remain. Okay. Thank you. I just want to jump in real quick and mention the, um, the benches again, it came up in, in a comment there. Um, you know, for the, the memorial bench program that was brought up earlier, I know there's interest in maybe different benches in the park, and, and that would be separate from this project. And I just encourage anyone, if they have any additional comments or, or thoughts on that, to send me an email uh, to, to make sure that we know who, who's interested in that, who um, might be a contract person for that that we can work with around those questions, and then definitely if we can keep those individuals in the loop. Um, the status of that program as we continue to find that moving forward. Sorry, I had, I had one more question. Um, on, the, on the new ramping and that bench by the, the entrance now, the new two benches there, is there any new fencing that's going there or is that all just um, like at level landscaping? Yeah. There's only fencing around the playground. Okay. Um, we are, we will be installing a new ramp and handrail for that ramp from the ADA stall, um, but there is not any other fencing um, proposed for the rest of the site, at least where, as related to the playground. Okay. And then the gates in are on the side over, I think I see them right there and then the on the way opposite. Yeah. Okay. And Melanie, Thank do you, you. did you want to respond to Commissioner Gutierrez's questions about uh, the bench number? We tried to provide enough benches that make sense without benches all over. There's also budgetary um, issues with, you know, just trying to make sure we hit a certain point so this is actually a viable project. Um, and so there's always opportunity to add more benches as maybe um, donor money or other monies come available or extra benches lying around the city, you know, to to fill in other spots if it becomes necessary, but we're, we're only proposing four new benches at this point, two inside and two out. When we were there, it was, um, it was really interesting to watch how the families um, and you know caregivers and kids kind of gathered in this area by the two benches and the main gate that's directly up from the ramp. Um, so it's, I think there's, there's a mix of people wanting to be inside and wanting to be outside. Um, and so we tried to provide a little bit for both. Um, I had one more question. The, what's the surface areas on the darker portion and the lighter portion? It's fibar. Just different colors. Oh no, it's it's just wood fibar. It's the oh. tan bark. Uh, and on the lighter portion, is that also? Oh, that's just the the plant. That's a planting area under the trees. So that'll just be mulched. So just okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? questions. Go ahead. Yeah, a question in regards to that five bar, does that stuff does that stuff hold up, or is, is it is it something that needs to be replaced on a? Yeah, um, it needs to be refilled on a regular, you know, basis. I I would assume, and I don't know, Catherine and and Craig, you guys can jump in if you already have a maintenance or April program for refilling five bar in your playgrounds um, as it exists, but it is uh, um, an ongoing maintenance yeah. need. Any more questions from the commission? Thank you so much. I think it looks great. Um, my kids are a little aged out, but <laughs> I would have loved it back when they were in that age group to play there. So I'm really excited. And um, I just want to call for any public comments. 
anyone on the public that's on this call would like to comment on this agenda item. Thank you, Chair. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raised hand if you wish to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to speak, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified by the host inviting you to participate. You need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. And we do have a raised hand at this time. It looks like Mora is an attendee with her hand raised. Let me get our timer set and I will go ahead and give you permission to talk. All right, whenever you're ready, Mora. Yes, hello. Um, we're primarily um, participating in the meeting today to convey our concern about the amount of dogs off leash in the area directly adjacent to the playground in the grassy area. Um, I think there's just a really dangerous situation with the number of off leash dogs and the number of small children. So it's just a real safety concern for us. Uh, we're aware of incidents that have happened and um, I know the city's aware of them and there, there doesn't seem to be any action being taken to address this serious safety issue involving children. Uh, and then there's a, a sanitation issue with the dogs uh, urinating and defecating in the grassy area uh, that really makes it combined with the off-leash dogs, an area where children really cannot play safely at all. Uh, and I think that's really uh, sad and I think the city should do more to have that space be a place where children can play. Um, it seems like a, a, a good solution is to create a fenced in uh, off leash dog area uh, by the gazebo uh, that is being replaced, I understand, or something's happening up there. Um, but the current situation is unsafe for children. And I, I think it's just a bad setup that needs to be addressed immediately before there's real a uh, really bad incident involving a child, which I think would just be so, so sad and it's avoidable. And I hope the city is gonna do something about that. Um, and I also on the bench issue, I think there should, I think now there's four benches in the playground. I think that works well. I think two is definitely not enough. Um, and um, otherwise I'm so, th we're thrilled that uh, the playground's being updated and, and thank you to uh, the city for getting that done. Thank you. So as a rule, we're not supposed to respond to public comment, but thank you for your comment and we're gonna oh, take it. Uh, no, Chair Emerson, we can, we can respond to public okay. comment for something that's on the agenda. Okay, um, perfect. So, you know, I know when we were out there um, at the park, we got, we had a lot of conversations with community members about dogs, probably equal numbers of uh, folks that had real concerns um, and those that were strongly advocating for figuring out a way to continue to allow, to that, that dogs there were, were they value being able to have dogs there. Um, you know, this is something that we discussed with the commission um, a while back, uh, and we had looked into the idea of off-leash dog hours, um, kind of establishing set hours that were for off-leash dogs when people knew um, to try and prevent um, kind of the, the types of incidents that um, the commenter was mentioning. Um, when we met with the neighborhood association um, and kind of proposed that idea, there was um, really a strong feeling that they didn't want to be the only um, park doing this type of pilot program and concerned that it would actually exacerbate the problem by attracting more dogs into the park. Um, so, you know, as part of the park and recreation master plan, we are hearing this concern at a number of parks in San Rafael. I know Sun Valley, especially since we're doing a lot of work there, is definitely an area where we see this, um, but it's there are a number of parks across the city 
where we see kind of these conflicts between um, off-leash dogs and other park users. So it is something that through the Park and Recreation Master Plan, we want to look at and we want to look at citywide and try and come up with, um, see, see what the recommendations, what our options might be. Um, there's, you know, for what the caller recommended with creating, uh, we actually at the, at the park had quite a lively debate with a few people about the idea of creating an off-leash fenced dot area up at the top with folks strongly arguing both for and against it. Um, there are just some, uh, you know, there's some, um, infrastructure issues with that upper area in terms of ADA accessibility um, and that uh, would make it we you know we can't just go in and put a fence and call it a dog park there's some serious significant investment that would need to be made to do anything up in that area and I think we'd have to look at that in terms of the citywide priorities um, and what you know what uh, how what the city Need, city's needs are overall with our park and recreation system. And that's so, you know, I think viewing that through the lens of the park and recreation master plan is going to be um, where we really need to look at this. And I think it's something important for the commission and for us as staff to keep in mind as we move forward with the park and recreation master plan and start to see the recommendations and the prioritization of those recommendations moving forward. Thanks, Catherine. Um, so yes, I think we have reached the end of this agenda item. So thank you again to our consultants. I'm sorry, my dog wants to be part of the meeting. Apparently <laughs> she's you. got something to say. Maybe it's dinner time. Um, and so now we're on to, is there oh, anything well, more? I think we're looking for a motion to approve. Oh, right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Can I have a motion to approve this plan from our commission? I'll move that we approve the plan. I'll second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cabrales? Yes. Chair Emerson? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Machado? Yep. And Commissioner Sandoval? Yes. All right, motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the great work. It's exciting. And thank you staff for moving this forward. Clearly it's a very important park to the community and I get it on the dog issue now that I have an unruly one of my own. I don't know that she'd be safe around all those children. Just joking. Children might not be safe around her. Who knows? Anyways, on to the next item. Um, oh the wooden gazebo at the Sun Valley Park. So yeah. I think I'll just put it over to, to you, Catherine, to frame, given that this has been ongoing for a while. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. I don't have a very long presentation on this, but um, I just wanna frame to make sure everyone is aware of, uh, can you all see my screen? Yes, okay. So the, what we're talking about were, is not this nice new gazebo shade area where our um, playground is on the right, but on the left, it's up behind that tree on the hill where this arrow is. Um, it's this wooden gazebo back here. So this is something that the commission has um, looked at a couple of times. Um, just to set a little bit of context, uh, back last summer, the city receives kind of a number of complaints from, from neighbors, um, from a couple of neighbors saying that they, over a period of, of years, they had been experiencing kind of continued um, disruption uh, from primarily teens going up into that gazebo area at night, um, throwing garbage into their um, backyard, being loud. Um, and so they, they reached out to um, some city council members and we were asked to kind of look into this issue. Um, I think there was also some concerns about fire danger, you know, that it is next to a hill 
um, with gra with a grassy area. Um, and so the first thing that happened was staff went and toured the site. Um, and the there was originally a barbecue under the wooden gazebo structure, which our fire, <laughs> our deputy fire chief said, that's got to go. That's definitely a fire hazard. So the city did remove that barbecue pit that was underneath the gazebo. Um, our public works, um, our public works director at the time said that the, uh, you know, looked at the structure and said that structurally there wasn't any safety issue there. Um, that you know, it was it's a, it's a structurally sound um, structure. <laughs> uh, so on August twelfth, the Park and Recreation uh, uh, Park and Recreation Commissioners toured the site. Um, that meeting was noticed, and approximately five to ten community members were on site um, to kind of speak with the commissioners. Uh, on October fifth, staff met with the Sun Valley Neighborhood Association to discuss the gazebo and off-leash dogs. That was kind of the meeting I mentioned earlier. Um, on March 17th, we did discuss the wooden gazebo at the Park and Recreation Commission, and there was kind of um, differing opinions on what to do with it, and staff were asked to try and gather more input from the community through the playground um, process. So on June 18th at the meeting that was just discussed at the previous item, we did ask people, what did they think about the wooden gazebo? Um, and I, I'm not, I don't know how much help this is gonna be in your decision-making process, but it, it was really mixed. Um, we did speak to, I did personally speak to a couple of the neighbors um, that felt pretty strongly that they, that this was an attractive nuisance um, and that, you know, they would like to see it removed. Um, we have since heard from some other close neighbors that feel quite strongly that they they are not seeing um, the nuisance and feel that it's an important amenity in the park. Um, most people that we spoke to didn't have a strong feeling. Um, they felt overall it was, you know, they liked it. They thought it was a nice amenity. They didn't think that moving it was really gonna change the situation. Um, but they, they also didn't really use it themselves. So, um, I think that's, that's the history of where we are, um, at that, at that, our last commission meeting, um, it was requested that staff gather more input that, that we could, uh, and come back to the commission when we discuss the playground to see if if there was any kind of more clear path forward. Um, and that's that's about what we what we were able to get. I think you know what we were seeing at the last meeting is that there's a few people that feel strongly um, both ways. And then we haven't gotten a lot of feedback because a lot of, you know, when when actually go, going out and asking people, they they kind of liked it, but there wasn't a strong feeling about it. Hey, Catherine. Yeah. Wasn't the concern that it cannot be seen from the street and so it was it was not safe? I mean, in regards to um, police or fire trying to see what's going on back there. And yeah, um, you know, we talked to them and the PD does did say that, you know, line of sight from the street is always um, valuable. They actually more were talking about some of the ivy. I don't know if you all remember um, the fence along the the um, the grass used to have was just overgrown with ivy. Um, so that they felt was, you know, that public works, I think, um, recently removed a lot of that. Um, so that helped with the line of sight. But yeah, you know, any in this day and age, we probably wouldn't build an amenity back there that is out of the public view like that because it can be an attractive nuisance, yes. Um, that said, we have not had, um, you know, we did pull police records from the area and there haven't been significant incidents related to um, the gazebo um, beyond, beyond this kind of illicit behavior from teens. 
And comparatively speaking, Catherine, like when you think about Grossel Park or Boyd Park and the amount of quote unquote nefarious activities in places that are out of the line of sight of police officers, like where does this come, where does this, you know, you know. I can't say I have that the data. I'd have to go, at, you know, get kind of the police reports on Boyd and, and Gersel. But I mean, you raise a, a good point that a number of parks in San Rafael have areas that are not visible from the street. Um, I mean, I'm I'm thinking even you know Santa Margarita Park has that tennis court that's over the way, and um, so. I, I can't say specifically um, comparatively number of incidents, but yes, I think your point is that we have a lot of parks that have amenities that are not visible from the. Well, every park does, right? It's right. not just Sun Valley. It's, you know, the nature of a public space. Right? Okay, so um, uh, Sandoval, I mean, uh, Gutierrez. Um. Thank you for all the work on this. Actually, I was going to ask about the police reports if you had pulled them because I was curious um, what that answer was. So thank you. It's um, I've thought about it a lot, and I know um, I'm sure everyone has. It's it's uh, this top. Well, <laughs> I also live 300 feet from it, so it's I get the postcards, I get the letters, um, and I hear you know members of the community talk about it. And I think my um, perception is that what you heard at that meeting is what most people think is that most people think yeah that's nice but no I don't use it um, there were a few letters that came in where people said oh there's been birthday parties and soccer parties I, I've never seen one um, I, I one I have seen one um, people don't use it for that because it's not kept up or, or it, it's often dirty and often left in a state where you wouldn't want to have a little birthday party. And so I feel like where I'm kind of circling around right now is that the, the downsides are sort of big for the people who live right there. Um, and that's, that's real. Um, unfortunately, the upsides aren't like really selling it. Um, you know, is there, can we put in like a little sensor light? that scares people away at night or are there things are there tools the city has to um mitigate some of the issues and i'm sure you've thought about this i know I'm, I, this isn't new to your desk but i just i feel like the downsides are are real and i i mean you know i voted to remove it last time and and we were deadlocked um, but I'm just sort of looking at it. It's this nice thing. Somebody else wrote a letter that was submitted to us at this last for this meeting here. And she was mentioning how it's, you know, if, if it's not unsound, why, do, why remove something? Like it's never going to be built again. We know how hard it is to get um, equipment and amenities built at parks. Um, the problem is it's not really an amenity and nobody's, it's not really serving um, you know, some kids go play in there sometimes, but you'd never let your kid under like age six go play in there. Um, so I think, I think if there's a way to make it feel like more of an amenity, and I think you're right about the fence with all the ivy in front, that made a huge difference in being able to monitor the park's activities from the street. Um, that it, it's in, it would be a no brainer to keep if there was actually, I'm not saying a rentable space, because I realized that would probably have to have certain features, um, ADA or water or whatever. Um, but just, I, I don't know if there was a way to make it so that it was actually the plus sides were higher than the, the minus sides. Um, I think it makes sense. And the, the, in the letter, the person also mentioned, you know, where else should teenagers go? It's not a crazy comment. I mean, um, teenagers are, are bored. They're not going to go to teen centers. They don't, they don't want to do that. They want to go somewhere for a bit. Um, and if they're doing dangerous things, you call the police and it sounds like that's not happening a ton. Um, but if they're just there, uh, you know, um, I assume they'll just be anywhere or where there's a bench or, um, so I don't know, I guess my, where I'm at right now is I, I, I wish the upsides were there. Um, and right now I just don't feel it. I've, I've lived here so long, right here near the park, but also in the neighborhood. Um, and like I said, there's never been 
a thing there. Certainly none that I've been invited to as a child or a parent. Um, so I don't think it's actually benefiting. That's my comment. Thank you. It helps anybody. Does anyone have any other comments um, that they want to share and opinions about this? I have a strong opinion. I'm warning you, and I will share it at the right time, but I will let everybody else speak first, please. Okay. I just, I ha I would just add, um, I have the same position I think that I took last time, which is, I think we should honor the stronger opinions of the, of the neighbors who are feeling the effects of this the most. Um, the mixed kind of feedback that we've gotten isn't enough to really change my mind on that. And I actually think removing the gazebo would present at least a step forward for talking about potential in the future things we can do with that space. Um, so I just see more upside to removing it personally. Mark, did you have anything? I'm where I was last time we voted, so. All right, well, I'm still where I was, which is, I think it's a cool amenity to the park. I think, you know, there's not that many opportunities to go and explore and find something hidden anywhere in nature. And a lot of our parks have features like that based on history. And uh, I don't think it, I think that having a precedent where some neighbors are able to have a removal of a feature, um, I just don't think we have enough evidence. Like, I just don't think there's enough people. There's not a 50 person petition. And I worry about the precedent that it's gonna set, right? You know, I complain about what's happening in the park and now the city is supposed to remove it. So I think it's just, as we talked about Catherine with the bench, right? Like how do we go about this when someone wants to do a thing in a park? Like what is the process? Is the process that people complain and then we as a commission vote and do what they're asking us to do or is there a better process around that? And so my thing is that I think we need to have you know, what is the next path forward after the gazebo is removed and how are we gonna make it safe for dogs and for teenagers or whatever, um, you know? So I think it's just, it's just complicated. So I don't feel based on the information that I have that it's the right move to remove it. Also, there's uh, the consideration of the cost to remove it and the fact that it's a sound structure. And then also the, the other subtext is like, what has, the city been able to do to really mitigate whatever is going on and has that even been you know followed by the neighbors or um I, I appreciate what you're saying ariel i haven't spent a lot of time there but i spent a lot of time there when my kids were little and it wasn't that it was nice the kids liked going up there so i have a different view you know so but i you know I, my view is from you know five years ago maybe things have changed so i understand that so that's what I have to say. So the options we have here is that someone can vote to remove it. We could do nothing. Uh, you know, that's kind of where we're at. We don't have to do anything. And Chair Emerson, we do have someone in the public with their hand up. Yeah, but I, I feel like, right. wouldn't we need to have a motion before no. they had no, to you take public pu comment you take or? Huh? You take public comment before you make a motion. Oh, okay. Could, could, I, could I also add though, as well, just because I, I have also been thinking about it a lot. And um, I really appreciate what uh, Commissioner Gutierrez was saying about the idea of trying to figure out a way to um, improve it in some ways. I do also agree, I think someone else mentioned that just removing it isn't going to take away the problem that that's happening there. I think that, you know, there's the activity that's being come that's being mentioned as detrimental to the neighbors happens in the hills above my house it happened you know like it, you don't have to have a bench for that to happen there right that's not so removing a bench is not going to stop that activity in my opinion um i i also think that the idea of um having a shade structure removed um is kind of not 
the direction we're going in, right? Didn't the neighbors just say we need a whole bunch more shade in the playground? And and like, I think shade is gonna become even more important in our parks. And so the idea of actively removing shade structure when I, I know from my experience, like it in kindergarten, I think it was tens of thousands of dollars to add a shade structure um, that it would, you know, you're removing that potentially we have it, it's already there, it's free, we've got it. Maybe we could do something to improve it um, so that it's more useful in general. Um, but I think that it, it's something that it, it would be a shame to remove um, and then pay for more shade structures. <laughs> so that's that's how I'm feeling. I, I would lean towards not removing it. Can I just add something? Wasn't the, the initial, the reason why this came up uh, is because of the neighbor was getting, was hearing a lot of noise and getting trash thrown into their backyard. And is that continuing to happen? And and what could, what could we do about that? I mean, is it? I mean, it, it, I, I mean, if the if the if the structure's not there, people aren't hanging out there. People aren't drinking there. People aren't getting stoned there, um, and they're not throwing stuff over the walls. Um, is how I see it. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Know. That's a good point, Mark. Like, I mean, I hear where you're, I understand your position and I'm just going to make one last comment, which is, I don't know what the mitigation has been. I don't know if there's been signage, like don't throw your garbage here. The police are watching you. Is there anything that has been done to strongly discourage the behavior in terms of like solar powered motion censored lights? You know, I don't know that any of that has happened. And, and I'll just say that, I mean, and, and I'll say as a realtor and sells homes and people buy homes in our, in our, in our beautiful city, that they sh should be able to enjoy their home without having stuff coming over the, the, the fence and hearing a bunch of stuff. Um, anyhow, uh, that is uh, what I have to say. Um, so I, I can just say that's that, the question I have for staff, though, is on the mitigation, like what has happened, just so we can better understand, you know, what the efforts have been. So when staff went up to view it, um, I think they looked at the options of of kind of like, can we could we raise a higher fence to prevent things from going over and the angle, the hill angle, basically that fence would have to be so huge it, it was in it was just infeasible there's no way to physically create a barrier um we have not uh motion censored lights you know i don't think that is something we've looked at my initial reaction is it would probably just get immediately vandalized we've had a lot of vandalism issues at sun valley park with the bathrooms and the locks the automatic locks there being broken um so I, you know, I think it would, I don't know, I, I have April's on the call, you know, um, automatic lights is not something we've had in, anywhere in our parks that I'm aware of. So I don't know, but, but that's just kind of my, my gut instinct is that it would just, what, what would prevent this, the um, people from just throwing a rock at it. Um, we did hear at the meeting on in June that um, one of the bollards um, for the maintenance road that goes up there was broken and that kids were actually driving their cars up there. So that is something we are going to fix. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I know April's team was was working on that. Um, in terms of, you know, we did when we were when we met with the community in June, um, that was right after I think I in a, my email I mentioned to you all or maybe in our last meeting that it was right after um, there was an incident at Sun Valley Park. So we did have um, PD at the meeting, uh, our Lieutenant Todd Berenger as well as Mayor Kate were there. And there was a large long conversation with the community about reaching out to the police and letting them know when things were happening at the park. Um, and that that there really needed to be kind of a, a a relationship and a community effort so so that PD knows what's going on because you know I'll be honest we've I've had a number of very similar conversations about different parks um, and concerns about illicit behavior at the parks and 
security at the parks. Um, and unfortunately, our PD, we only have so many staff. Um, so the more that the community can help them and can call them and can let them know when things are happening so they they can can come and check it out and deter the behavior, um, the better. Um, but, you know, it, one other thought I did have just hearing this conversation, um, you know, I, I don't uh, in doing the park and recreation master plan, you know, we're seeing the list of recommendations at each park is is long. The the work that the city needs has in front of us um, in terms of addressing the infrastructure needs citywide at all of our parks is long. I think we can include, um, you know, if if we can include that this part of the park needs to be addressed as a recommendation, and it can kind of fall out in terms of where it sits in our citywide priorities. Um, you know, that's that's an option to kind of chair Emerson to get to your point of like, how do we, what should the process be? And that is, you know, typically what we would say the process would be. Um, yeah, thank you. Because I also think about what's next. It's like, okay, you're going to remove it. And then there's a cement slab there and potentially there's still teenagers that might go there and right and uh, you know i think either uh, way we could look at that area as as a recommendation in the park and rec master plan again you know just looking at the needs citywide i don't i don't know you know we haven't developed what our prioritization criteria will be you know we'd have to see where where that would fall yes um are the people who the neighbors who originally sort of reached out with the complaint have they been following up on this do we have you been in i, I will see who who's has their hand raised <laughs> who's, on there. Okay. <laughs> who's, Thank who's you. prepared to comment but no i i haven't directly heard any more from them um and i, I believe susan reached out prior to our march meeting and also did not hear more from them All right, so I think we're in a place where we can, unless anyone else has anything more to say, maybe we can move to the public comment. Does that sound okay? All right, thank you, Chair. If you are watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raise hand if you wish to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to speak, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be notified by the host inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. And we do have a raised hand um, by a phone call in. So I will get our um, timer ready here. And we only have one phone call in. So when you're ready to speak, please press star six. I'll restart that when they're ready here. All right, phone caller ending in 5012. Go ahead and press star six. Hi, can you hear me? There you are. Yes. Oh, good. That took about uh, six star sixes. <laughs> anyway, oh. uh, thank you. First of all, I want to thank everybody for the thoughtful discussion. My name is Chris Detorney Burkhan, and uh, my husband was sitting next to me until he finally gave up and left the room. Um, we live in um, the property that probably has the longest fence line to the park. We've been residents there for 26 years. Um, I have um, a bird's eye view of the park from our front deck as well as our side deck, and I can hear everything that goes on all the way down to what's in the playground. So I've been overlooking the gazebo for years, and I've been sometimes a crazy woman over the years that has said, hey, kids, you know, be quiet, you know, stop using bad language. Um, I will say that ever since marijuana has been legalized in our state, 
there has been so much less pot smoking down there. So I don't worry about that anymore. There was a fire years ago before we bought the house. That was from people doing fireworks on the upper area. So it had nothing to do with the gazebo. The fire did run up and burn our, burn our deck, which was replaced right before we bought it. Um, I'm a proponent of keeping the gazebo. I feel that the incidents that occur there are few and far between. And um, just to say, I actually have thrown birthday parties and soccer parties there and been invited to them. It was a long time ago because my kids are now 32 and 25. Um, I did develop a softer spot um, after my son was not a teen anymore, that teens did need a place to go. I was probably a lot less, a lot less supportive of teens hanging out down there when he was one of them. But I I realized, especially during the pandemic, that it was a spot that people could come to and just not be down in the midst of everything. The lower area is wonderful. It was great when my kids were small, but it really, the park is been overtaken down below for kids and dogs. And I definitely had a dog too. I am concerned if dogs get moved to the upper level because they are a lot louder and the people with the dogs are a lot louder. I can hear them in the morning. So I would not really want that right under my area. And as far as garbage, I, we've rarely had a piece of garbage thrown over into ours, our yard, and we're the closest to the gazebo. Um, in fact, my only complaint is that we've got some neighbors that are on the other side of the gazebo that are incredibly loud for their outdoor parties. But this is how we all learn to live and get, you know, get along with each other. Um, we do have noise ordinances. Um, I don't think there's a problem with being in the park and making noise as long as you're within the noise ordinance limits. And that would go for all the neighbors. I, I think we just need to be respectful and I would love to see improvements on the gazebo made. It needs TLC, it hasn't had it in years. It's very run down. Um, it's a bit of forgotten what I think could be a little gem. And I'm also a zero waste consultant and I'm an outreach specialist. And I don't feel that something should be torn down if it's in good shape and we can do improvements on it. It's a huge cost to dismantle it. And I worry about even where those materials will go once it's dismantled, that they'll go to landfill. I think it's got a roof line that could be helpful uh, if the city got money to put solar panels up to generate energy for the park, for the bathrooms, for to put back into the grid. So I think that there is benefit to keeping it. I do see it as an amenity and I'm not sure what all the things happen, but I've been there a lot and I've always been surprised that there's less activity than you think could happen. Um, and so I, I hope that some of the people um, that I've heard could reconsider this position because I just think that it needs, um, we need to improve our infrastructures, not tear them down. And I don't know what will go there, but I really hope it's not the dog park. So with that, I thank you all for your service. So I know commissioners are appointed and not paid and, um, and appreciate the time that you've given to this uh, topic. And I, I am curious why all of my emails did not get ever factored in to what I was reading were the recaps of what neighbors felt. So, and I know my next door neighbor is indifferent. Um, I've already talked to him. So in any case, um, we'll wait to see what you decide to do. And thank you for your time. Thank you. I think Becky was just trying to tell me that your three minutes was up, but you ended your, your um, thank you so much. And yes, we did receive your emails. Yeah, and I'm not sure what happened with the sequencing, but thank you for your public comment and entering your public comment ahead of time. So, you know, here we are, I said from the group, like, as a chair, can I make a motion, Catherine? I, I don't know about the Roberts rules on this one. I actually don't know. I, uh, I've seen April shake her head. What? <laughs> April, can I make a motion? But I'm supposed to be facilitating, but I'm like, okay. You know, I've never seen a commissioner. I, I sit on the BPAC sometimes. I've never seen the chair make a recommendation. So I'm not sure if you can. Okay, well, I'll frame it this way. If anyone wants to make a recommendation that we explore mitigation strategies and put this as part of the park master plan, master plan, that would be, I mean, there might be better wording for that, but that would be my recommendation for a motion on this item is that we keep it as something that we're considering. We look at the mitigation seriously and see where it fits into the sequencing of 
the other priorities that we have. And that's all I'm gonna say. Can I ask one more follow-up question, Catherine? Um, it hadn't occurred to me till uh, Commissioner, I think Cabrala said this, correct me if I'm wrong, who said it. Um, if you tear it down, what we mean by tear down is really leaving a concrete pad there? Like that's, that would be the reasonable expectation? Um, and you might not I, know. I don't know, I haven't, I have to say, I don't think I'm familiar enough with ex exactly what's up there, but it, it would be our public work. We don't have a budget for this, so it would be our public works team would go in and take it down. Um, I So I, I wouldn't expect a huge amount of remediation to happen. Just knowing our public works staff workloads and their capacity. Thank you. So could we make a motion then to um, be sure that this is included in the master plan and that it is prioritized um, in amongst all the parks and that way? Is that is that what you were saying earlier, Catherine? Um, you can, you, there's, I mean, there's, a, you can, you can do whatever you want. You also could just direct staff. You don't, doesn't have to be a motion. You could just direct staff to, you know, include this in the park and recreation master plan and say, we're, we're done with this item. No one wants to make any other motion and, and we move on. Um, and then it becomes, then we include it as the park in the park and rec master plan process, or you can make a motion um, to to, to do that, or you can make some other motion <laughs> to do something else. Well, the floor is open for any motions, but I'll let that percolate, but I would then recommend that we include the ongoing improvement of uh, both the gazebo area and the dog park in the parks master plan just as a recommendation to staff, which I'm sure is totally already under consideration. And it looks like we have Commissioner Sandoval with the hand raised. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think rarely do we have opportunities to really make a change quickly when the community has requested it. I'm just thinking like I live in Peacock Gap, for example, people are having a huge discussion in the community right now about the lanes on Point San Pedro Road. How many lanes do we need? There's a new park there. It's gonna take years for that to be finished. I don't like the idea of pairing it with the master plan process, kicking the can down the road again, when we know that there are complaints and there are issues. And the way I see it is we're here to make a decision. So I would motion to remove it. I'll second that. Okay, any more discussion on the motion? Catherine, do we call for a public comment again when there's a vote about to be had or not? No, we do okay. a roll call vote. All right, so Commissioner Sandoval, your hand is still raised. Yeah. Um, did you want more discussion on the motion? Just, just one more thing I do want to address. I, the concern that this might not fix the problem and I, and I totally understand like it might not fix the problem, but we have other shade available right now, and we don't necessarily know if it will fix the problem or not until we just do something. So another another thought there. Thanks. So you wanted to change your motion? Or are you just saying that you're concerned about it? No, yeah. no, I don't want to change the motion. I just wanted to address the comments about how we, we might not know if it's going to make an improvement. 
And I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, this is definitely going to fix the problem. But we don't know until we make the change. So. All right, let's go for a vote. All right, um, Commissioner Cabrales. No. Chair Emerson. No. Commissioner Gutierrez. No. Commissioner Machado. To remove, yes. And Commissioner Sandoval. Uh, yes. Motion does not pass. Okay, thank you guys for getting through the process with us. That's why we're here. And um, I think we're, we're done with this agenda item and we have our, uh, part, our measure A to go over, right? So let's go ahead and take it away, staff. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here and share my screen and share a brief presentation on our measure A work plan for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes, okay. yes. My, yep. my, my screen has frozen. Give me just a second here. We see your frozen screen. <laughs> Still frozen. Um, can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm still frozen on my end. So sorry for the tech difficulties here. Apparently trying to ask too much of my computer at 7.30 p.m. Are people seeing Craig's um, screen? I actually can't see the screen. I'm not seeing it myself. Um, Mine just says right. it's uh, that he started screen sharing. It seems frozen on that. Oh, there okay. we go. Uh, now it's working. Okay. I, I, we're back in business here, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so uh, measure a work plan for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, Maroon County voters just reapproved measure A for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, measure A uh, was reapproved in June. It's a nine-year quarter of 1% retail transaction and use tax um, that helps support the preservation of marine parks, open space, preserves, and generates for the county approximately $14 million annually. Um, there are three kind of buckets of funding that is uh, divvied up. There's the County Parks and Open Space Program, which is allocated 65% of that 14 million. Uh, the Farmland Preservation Program, as well as the City, Town, and Applicable Special District Program. That's the bucket that we fall under. Uh, within that bucket of funding, uh, the, the way that the, the county uh, determines funding is based on population size. And so of that funding, the City of San Rafael receives uh, 22.91% of those funds, and that's just based on population. So during the past nine years, since 2013, the city has received a total of three points, about $3.9 million in Measure 8 funding. Um, historically, that's been used for a variety of things. Uh, it's been used for vegetation management, fire fuel load reduction, uh, as well as park-related capital improvement projects. So a portion of that in the past nine years has been used for those park improvement capital projects, about $1.3 million over that period of time. Um, so a table that shows the, uh, the way that the city has utilized that funding. Uh, so that period FY15-14 through FY15-16 received about $250,000 in funding that went towards miscellaneous park repairs, a variety of equipment, including slides and tables, as well as the Sun Valley Park basketball court uh, project. And since then, we've worked on a variety of projects, including over Park Playground, the Jones's Playground, uh, some work more recently, including the Pickleweed Park Field Conversion Project, uh, planning for that. 
uh, some planning for Elbert Park Stadium field fencing, some upgrades there, as well as more recently the Sun Valley playground upgrades, which we were discussing just this evening. Uh, then last year, money was allocated towards the Park and Recreation Master Plan. Uh, moving forward, uh, we are proposing to work on several projects. Um, for this upcoming fiscal year, uh, we're proposing money will go towards park planning. Uh, so continuing to work on the Citywide Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Uh, we've identified some additional needs there to continue to fund that project. Uh, we are recommending uh, funding towards the Sun Valley Park project, which would, as you saw tonight, replace the playground and improve ADA accessibility. Uh, recommending some field improvements uh, towards Elbert Park Field. Um, there are a few gaps in the safety netting and fencing that have presented some uh, risk management concerns and safety concerns for both users of that facility as well as the public outside of the facility. So we're recommending allocating funding towards that project as a risk management concern. We've also heard pretty clearly so far in our initial um, public feedback and the comments we've received on the master plan process that um, trails, hiking, and pedestrian throughways are a uh, are definitely an important part of what the city of Santa Rafael residents want. And we're recommending the creation of a citywide trail master plan. I just noted a typo actually in this presentation that we're, we're recommending that as part of an open space management plan, not as part of the bike and pedestrian master plan. So excuse me for the typo there, but that's the recommended funding for that item. And then uh, our community centers have several rooms which have dividers uh, at Elbert J. Burrow Community Center and the Terra Linda Community Center. Uh, we have some of those dividers that have failed mechanically and are also presenting some safety hazards, hazards to, uh, to manage those. So we're recommending funding go towards improving those room dividers replacing those. So uh, there was a, a, a staff report that supplemented this that had some additional detail and information about Measure A. Uh, but I want to keep this fairly short and to the point here and see if there's any other comments or questions about that plan. At this point. Thanks, Craig. Great presentation. Um, any comments? Turn my camera back on so I can. I had one question. This is Commissioner Gutierrez. Um, were there any, pro what, were there any projects that didn't make the cut that are worth sharing with us or was it a pretty easy decision process on how you selected the how the money would be allocated um so we really just rolled over the projects from last year um and with the idea that the park and rec master plan is going to be um the way that we'll identify large projects moving forward um so yeah we just kind of uh some of the projects we didn't uh, like the Sun Valley project, you know, we started design last year and then construction is happening this year. Um, the, the trails master plan, um, I think, you know, actually one of the things we're seeing from the park and rec master plan community engagement process is that the far and away the number one ac recreation activity in our community is hiking and walking. So that trails master plan. We had planned to do it last, like last year is when we started allocating money to it, but the, the Park and Rec Master Plan is really validating that choice. Um, but as Craig said, we had originally thought to do it as part of the bike and pedestrian plan, which is being updated next year. So that was kind of the, the delay on that. But um, in speaking with um, our partners over in the fire department, they're actually have been wanting to use measure C funds to develop a open space management plan really focused on kind of wildfire vegetation management. And we thought, you know, actually just given our trails and um, the system we or have or kind of looking at our open space, it makes more sense to have it as part of the open space plan as opposed to the bike and pedestrian plan. Um, so there's a lot of projects on our list that <laughs> that aren't mentioned here, um, but we're we're hoping to sort that out through the Park and Rec Master Plan process. And I just want to say it was like my very first meeting where Measure A was 
you know, on the docket and it was exciting, you know, as well as Phil Lesh showed up to the meeting, which was also very exciting. But, you know, I think it's in a good place now. The measure A is extended and folding it into an overall plan has been my dream. So thank you staff for moving that forward. And I think it's going in a really good direction um, on all fronts. So do we need a motion to accept the measure A work plan that's already been decided? I'm sorry. Yeah, I think you can move to accept the report. I, I'll, I'll motion to accept the report. And we do have one member um, still an attendee if we want to take public comment. Good call, Becky. Yep. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raised hand if you wish to speak. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. So I will look for a raised hand here. I do not see one. So we can go ahead forward with that. Oh. So vote, motion and a second, vote. We already had the motion. I'll second it. Oh, we need the second, we'll call for a vote. All right, um, Commissioner Cabrales. Yes. Um, Chair Emerson. Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez. Yes. Commissioner Machado. Yep. And Commissioner Sandoval. Yes. All right, motion passed, thank you. Thanks, Craig. Welcome. So I think we have um, staff announcements. Is our next agenda one item or did I miss something? Item. What? We're almost through. One more agenda item. There's, oh, gosh. Okay. Let me go back to my scripts. <laughs> Sorry. Just the advisory there. committee. <laughs> oh, the advisory committee. Yes. So I can go ahead and just jump right in here if you'd like me to. I would love it. Okay, great. Thank you. So this is an item to select uh, a representative from this commission to uh, sit on the pickleweed advisory. Um, the reason that this happened, we just have a, a, a new vacancy, um, Ariel, correct? That was, was serving in this role and is stepping away from that role. Um, they've been kind enough to attend tomorrow's meeting. We have a pickleweed advisory committee meeting tomorrow um, for the month of August. And then uh, the Pickleweed Advisory Committee will be meeting uh, potentially two more times this year in the month of September and the month of October. And then in December, there may be a uh, kind of an end of season gathering uh, that uh, committee members would be uh, able to attend but would not be an obligation. So what this is for is to uh, select and designate a representative from this commission to Senate Pickleweed Advisory Committee. Um, that committee provides valuable insight and input into representing and advocating for the canal area residents' needs and wishes for the programs and the services that happen at the Pickleweed uh, Park and the Albert J. Burrow Community Center. So this would be a temporary assignment. This would be to um, fill in for the remainder of the calendar year. Uh, so this would be a short-term assignment. Uh, and there is a supplementary uh, report on this one as well uh, with some additional information. Uh, any questions about that? What are the Can dates I, in September or October? Let me double check those dates. I'll pull those up to make sure I get those. I, we may not have specific dates. They, we meet the first Wednesday of every month or the months wow. that we meet in. Uh, there is not a, a meeting planned for September. It's October and December. However, a special meeting might be called. In that case, one might be added perhaps in September. But it's usually the first Wednesdays of the month at 7 o'clock. And Steve is going to be the, the expert on this. So thanks for being here, Steve. Can I uh, briefly comment? Is that okay? I just wanted to let everyone know I'm not stepping down for, because I didn't find it very fulfilling and I really loved working with the Pickleweed um, uh, group. I just, I took a role at my kid's school that'll take a lot more evening meetings this year. Um, and I just can't do that many evening meetings. I had to pick. Um, so I just want to thank Steve for, for all your leadership and, and I, he's doing such wonderful things over there. And I really um, think that committee is so valuable and important. And um, so I could be a backup. I just, I needed to step um, sideways. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, Ariel. We appreciate your help. 
I, I would jump in. I mean, if, if somebody else, if somebody else wants to do it, you're welcome to take it. But I, if it's just to to fill in for the rest of the year, I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy to step up. That sounds good. Are you okay with that, Steve? Mark, you're always welcome down there, <laughs> or virtually. <laughs> so, can we get a motion? that Commissioner Machado takes over the role as the liaison and okay, Ariel, Ariel it's Ariel, right? Not Ariel. Like, are you, you're not a mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is it? She's it's Ariel, you're right. She Ariel, like okay. Sorry. Thing. I do. Used to. <laughs> Anyways, um, would you be interested in being the alternate? Yeah, that okay. would be, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. So should we have two separate motions for that, Catherine, or can we just roll it up? I think we probably should do two separate motions. Got it. Do we need public comment on this item? Yes. Uh-oh. Yes. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> All right. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raise hand if you wish to speak. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. And I do not see a raised hand, so we can go ahead and continue. So we need a motion for Mark to be the liaison to Pickleweed. You can motion yourself, Mark. You can oh, do that. Okay, I'll motion that I be the uh, liaison to Pickleweed. Go, Mark. Yeah. I'll second. Can I do that as the chair? Not. No. no. I'll say I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up with the city clerk so next time we know. But let's play it oh, with, with only five. Let's play it safe. Yes. I heard I'll Kayla second, second. Yeah, I'll second. Yeah. All right. Commissioner Cabrales. Yes. Chair Emerson. Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez. Yes. Commissioner Machado. Yes. And Commissioner Sandoval. Yes. Okay. Motion passed. Okay, can we get another motion on the alternate? I'll, I'll motion to nominate myself as the alternate. I like it. I'll, I'll second. Okay, um, Commissioner Cabalas. Yes. Chair Emerson? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Machado? Yes. And Commissioner Sandoval? Yes. Motion pass again. Thank you. Okay. So I think we are moving on to commission reports and comments. Is there anything anyone wants to report on as a commissioner member? Anything you attended? Anything you did that's relevant to our work that you want to share with the group? Um, I'll report that I'm taking my seven month old to the community pool this week. And it's been great. Yeah. Aw, take lots so. of pictures. That's yeah, excellent. I did. <laughs> <laughs> my, my son will be the lifeguard there, so. <laughs> okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's great over there. Aw, that's nice. I went to the bike races downtown on Saturday. They were really cool. I mean, it was it was it was fun to actually have that back and have the uh, just the crowd. You know, there wasn't a big crowd, but it was there was people out, and it was it was fun, and, and downtown was alive, and so it was kind of nice to see that. Yeah. Well, hopefully this year will be even more. You know, normal than previous. I'm anxious myself to get back to normalcy. I think we're still in it for a little bit longer with COVID, unfortunately. So I can say just on the public health front that we're kind of waiting on, there will be an Omicron booster for the fall and it might be coming soon. And so the push will be like, who's eligible for that Omicron booster and what are the recommendations? I don't think the county will go back to any kind of mask mandate. It's only going to be recommendations at this point. And we'll see after the fall what happens with elections and how the CDC relaxes their isolation guidelines. So that might change 
the world we live in for the better, which is that people don't have to stay home for 10 days and test and all that stuff. It might just relax it a bit, which is what we're hoping for, but I think they're gonna wait for this next wave of the booster to see what happens. Um, so never a dull moment in public health, but I mean, I think from like the policy perspective, there's really no reason to not have in-person meetings and to move in that direction if the group wants to. I know we're not there now, but I think it would be nice, especially for our public too, just to, you know, be in real life. Not that we're not in real life right now. Get back to the in-person meetings. Would it be hybrid? Yeah. Not too. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, that's that's a good question, Catherine. Can you? Yeah, so we have been, our um, digital team has been working on making the room at B Street um, or San Rafael Community Center hybrid, the one that we used to meet in. I believe all of you have, have been there before. No, I thought I was thinking, Commissioner Sandoval, you've never been to an in-person meeting. Um, or Commissioner Cabrales, yes, all right. So it's the little lounge um, right on the left as you enter the San Rafael Community Center is where we used to meet. And our digital team has been working on getting that uh, with hybrid capabilities. It's not quite, I, last I heard, we they there's still some work they need to do on that. Um, an alternative, I mean, one, I know Chair Emerson, we were speaking earlier, mentioned that it was a bit of a small room, although now with a smaller commission, maybe it won't feel quite as um, tight. Uh, another option we we could look at there's a larger conference room on the upstairs of City Hall um, if if it did feel like it was the quarters were a little too tight in that room but I'll we'll follow up with our digital department as well as um, the city clerk and to find out what other boards and commissions are doing um, about but that is our intention is ultimately to do a hybrid solution but uh, commissioners and staff would be expected to attend in person. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I don't know what the future of the um, the rules around attendance. I mean, with COVID, it's different, right? But in general, you can't participate remote if you're in a public. Right, the hybrid is really know. set up for public participation. Right, it's not set up for us as commissioners. We're supposed to show up in person. Right. Um, although I can see the remote being a benefit for people with mobility issues. So we'll see if anything changes on that front. But mm -hmm. I think we are taking the summer off, right? as far as in-person meetings and we'll revisit maybe in September or at our next meeting if we're meeting in August. I know we're meeting in September, no, so we'll revisit yeah. at the next meeting. Yes. All right, any other commission reports or comments? Any public comment? Sounds like we're not getting that. So we'll move on to the staff comments. All right, I'm gonna keep it brief since this has definitely been a longer meeting for us. Um, I, think I, I think I sent an email to you all. If I didn't, I apologize, but we got some very good news um, last month that the city's application to the Land and Water Conservation Fund for the large project at Pickleweed Park that includes synthetic turf, a uh, new basketball court, new play structure for youth under five, new restroom, um, what else, uh, fitness equipment. Um, we, have been we have been recommended from the state for funding from the National Park Service. So basically what that means is now we start on a multi-month process of trying to get through the uh, federal grant hurdles around section 106 and NEQA, so environmental and cultural um, review. And then if we get passed through that, the Park Service approves us for funding, that project will be moving forward. Um, so given that it's a current recreational site, we've, we have been told that getting through the national grant process or federal grant process will take time, but there shouldn't be any concern there. So it's, it's, you know, not, we're not going to count our chickens until they've hatched, but it's really good news and looking very, very promising. Um, so that's, that's going to be about 4.2 million from land and water conservation and another 
five million um, that the city has found through kind of the, you know, the the funds that have been coming in um, through COVID relief. I hear, I see Commissioner yeah. Machado. Sorry, talking. sorry. I don't know if you're talking to us. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, what would be kind of a general timeline for all that to happen? So they expect that we'll get approval next summer, um, next summer, fall. And there's a little bit of a timeline. Um, there's some sensitivity. This, the habitat along the marsh is sensitive. There's some endangered species there. So the basketball court and half of the fields can only be constructed from like September through February. So we're going to have to kind of, that's just something we'll, we'll have to work out if we can get all of that done in one year, one season. If we don't know till, till summer, are we going to be able to mobilize for that section that year? Or so there's, there's some timeline stuff we still have to work out, but I would expect that we'll start, we'll start to see some progress the end of next year. Well, it's exciting anyhow, but uh, it's a I long know, time it's like, coming. Yeah. Yeah. Long time coming. Well, you know, anytime you're working with federal grants, it's even longer than state or, you know, we were joking earlier, local processes with bench, you know, you think you can just put in a bench, but it takes us a couple months to figure it out. The federal, it takes a year. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, we're super excited. It's, I mean, it's a huge $9 million project. We, the city would never have been able to yeah. fund that otherwise so um then park and rec master plan um your next commission meeting there will be an update on the planning process uh our plan is that so we have a steering committee meeting on august 31st another community meeting on september 8th and then your park and rec commission meeting on september 15th and at those meetings we'll be bringing forward kind of the criteria for priority advertising projects so that's really that's going to be the meat of like we're going to have a laundry list of projects that we want to do but how do we prioritize them for funding um and so that's we're developing those criteria is going to be really important we're working on that with the consult or we're, we're working on a recommendation with the consultants right now and then we'll be bringing that forward to these groups for um for weighing in on that um so that's pretty exciting and we're starting to see kind of the in the next week or two, we should have um, some documents published that's just like a park inventory that shows what we have right now, kind of current conditions, um, as well as more detailed information on the community outreach um, feedback and, and that. So that will be going out to the steering committee for their review. Uh, it will be provided to you as well. Um, and then I did wanna just follow up. I know at one of our previous meetings, I had mentioned the city was exploring Funding options um, for some of our deferred infrastructure. Um, unsurprisingly, this, uh, you know, just kind of given the current state of the world and the economy, um, we've kind of, the city's decided that now's not the right time to look at a tax measure. Um, just there's we uh, speaking with the the consultants, they said they they haven't seen kind of across the region, not just in San Rafael. Um, these kind of polling numbers around taxes since 20, since the Great Recession. So uh, the out, folks outlook is pretty, pretty, um, people are concerned. So we're, it's not the right time. Uh, we're still going to keep, you know, those, those needs are still there. We still got to figure out a way to address them. So we're going to keep, keep exploring that, but just wanted to let you all know that's not something you'll be seeing on this year's ballot. Um, uh, great. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, I just I was wondering where we is that I is that where we had left the library thing like the um, choosing whether or not to renovate the, the existing library or the plan that we had talked about plan, that we planned for the combined library is that is that that was sort of hinging on this right so is that sort of now not going to happen for either choice. Um, so for the city to move forward with either choice, if we have to find a funding source. Um, it's of the size that the city, you know, we need to find an additional source of funding for that. Um, that's, uh, we're still, we're gonna keep 
looking for that and trying to figure it out, it's still a priority. Um, but it's, uh, we, we have received a million dollars in funding from the state for the library improvements. Um, either of those projects is probably 35, 40, $50 million project. So millions not going to get us very far, but we will be using that for some just basic improvements at the Carnegie, uh, at the down, current downtown library to make that place a little bit more ha habitable, honestly. Um, but we are, you know, we're going to be looking at 2024, looking at different options um, for funding uh, and for potential ballot initiatives then. So there never was a choice made between either project. It was more like find the funding and then make the choice. Well, and no, no. So or... the the initial results um, from the, the community survey that was done in February, I believe, um, showed that there was more community appetite for fixing what we already have than kind of building a new facility. Um, so city council has not taken direction. So city council, ultimately at the end of the day, it's gonna be city council's decision what, what happens. And they have, not, they have not reviewed this item and made a decision one way or the other. The poll results were indicating that the downtown library was more um, was favored by the community and would be more likely to receive um, to be successful in getting funding for that. So that's that's where we're at right now. But uh, so that that's kind of the more of the direction that the city is going is looking at the current downtown renovating the and expanding the current downtown library. Um, there just didn't seem to be the interest from the community in, in funding the B Street option. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody uh, asked me about that and I was like, God, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Go yeah. On. Thank you. I, I mean, that, that said, city council has not made a decision. So, you know, well, we're going to keep, we're going to keep just looking at the options, but but the downtown is seem seems like that's the direction the city will go. All right. Unless there's any further questions, Craig, did you have any thing to add? Yeah, just a couple quick notes that I wanted to share. It might be of interest. Um, you know, our summer season's wrapping up and to date uh build our, our programs that are available to register for this doesn't include drop-in programs filled to about 86 percent capacity overall this season for the programs to date about 84 percent of those participants were the city of san rafael residents so it's always great to see that our programs are uh, really being utilized by the city of san rafael residents uh, fall activity guide is going to be published very soon uh, it's expected to be delivered to households on thursday uh, and online registration for fall programs begins on Wednesday, August 10th. Uh, the walk-in registrations will open on August 17th. So I encourage everyone to visit the website for additional information about upcoming programs and descriptions and how to register. Um, so far this year, the division has approved uh, 32 youth scholarships to attend recreation division programs. And just a, a general reminder, we have additional funds available to provide more scholarships. So we are always, always encouraging people to apply and take a look at that application process uh, to make sure that these programs are as accessible to people in our community as possible. A um, couple quick personnel updates. In mid-July, we just welcomed the new pre, uh, Pickleweed Preschool Center Director, Maria Velarde, who's filling a, a vacancy in that role. So we're welcoming her. Uh, we're in the second round of interviews to fill our uh, recreation supervisor position at the San Rafael Community Center and have a strong field of applicants. So hoping to fill that soon. And we're currently accepting applications for a vacancy in our program coordinator classification. And the first review of those applications will be August 22nd. So, you know, if anyone is looking for full-time employment with the city, uh, we are hiring right now. Uh, we're switching to fall season, the fall season quickly. So childcare is gonna uh, return to our school-age childcare program instead of our kids' camps. Uh, first day of school for San, San Rafael City Schools is August 17th. Um, Miller Creek begins August 18th, so we're gearing up for that. Uh, we've talked about this a couple of times. I think in my last report that I talked about our aquatics programs, how there's been a, a national lifeguard shortage. And so we've been really working to address that by facing a challenge by recruiting and training enough staff 
uh, to respond to uh, make sure that we're able to safely run our Terra Linda, Terra Linda uh, pool as well as the Hamilton pool. So we're still working with our, our, our aquatic staff on that. I think they've done a great job this season. You know, one of the ways that they've been working through that is by offering a variety of different trainings. So they've done everything from junior lifeguard programs for participants ages 12 to 14, all the way up to a recent lifeguard instructor training course they offered last week where they certified six new lifeguard instructor trainers. So those individuals can now go in and train other people how to become a lifeguard. And we're really hoping that uh, all of those efforts are gonna help develop a great team of lifeguards here for San Rafael, but also bolster the, the regional workforce capacity for teachers. So a big shout out to all of them for the work that they've done. Um, you might have seen this in the, the Friday memo, but I wanted to um, call attention to this as well. The Albert J. Burrow Community Center to offer a ton of programs this summer, but one of those was the Canal Mini Soccer League. Um, they're going to receive an $8,000 grant from Marin County Parks to make that program even more accessible to low-income youth in the Canal neighborhood and to purchase new equipment for the league. Uh, so it serves a lot of kids. It serves, I think, about 156 kids were enrolled uh, in the current summer season. So we're uh, excited that they have that opportunity to continue to serve more kids. Um, uh, upcoming exhibit of Fal at Falkirk Cultural Center. Um, there's a call for artists for a juried exhibition by Susan Press. They use art and use and delight. That exhibition will run August 12th through September 23rd. And the Kendall C. King exhibit just wrapped up on Friday. And if you had a chance to go, it was just a really, really incredible um, art exhibit. So uh, some good things happened there as well. And that's all I've got on my end. Thank you. Well, it's been a long meeting and um, I'm just wondering, you know, in the future, I think it might be nice to take some time to like decide what agenda items people might want to see at the next agenda in terms of these meetings. Um, we don't have to do that today, but I think I welcome the commissioners to message our leadership or myself about like what, you know, what they would want to discuss. Cause again, we do sort of have our regular cadence, but I think there's always, you know, me, it's the beach park. I'm like, what's happening at the beach park? Want to know um or if there's anything people are just interested in addressing so that we can agendaize it and the staff can prepare for it so we can have a thoughtful discussion um i think i was like multitasking and thinking about wildfire prep and it might be good to partner with the parks for some signage about mask wearing and safety around being outside in times of smoke um just because what i think we've experienced that is our vulnerable populations don't always pay attention to the guidelines of staying indoors and we might want to think about some messaging. Yeah, and I, I will just say typically, well, we I can't say typically because I think we've only done it one year now, but what we're trying to start doing is, is to kind of at our January meeting, come to you with a, you know, a plan for what we're going to be addressing at different meetings. And that would be a great opportunity to, to share other, you know, you can message us before to make sure we can incorporate that in our planning. Or during that discussion, we can we can definitely take other ideas to add to that schedule. Um, and of course, you know things come up throughout the year, uh, so we're definitely you know and, and Chair Emerson at our next meeting, if I I can try to remember to include some um, just an update on Beach Park. There's not a huge amount to update, but I can just share where things are at during our next staff um, comment. Um, I'll just be sure to include that in my staff comments. Yeah, and I think I, I'll reach out to you separately, Catherine, about like the park thing and the wildfire prep, just because we're getting close. Sure. All right. I think that the meeting is adjourned at 8 p.m. Good job. Two hours. Go team. Thank you. Thank you, you for your that. commitment and taking the time. We'll see you in on September 15th.